Hello. A short time ago I made a video about um, sharpness sickles and uh, a little bit has happened since then that I thought I would make a little addendum to that, a little addition to um, bring something to light that uh, I didn't uh, talk about last time. So it concerns the sharpening stones and that is the cigar stone which I showed last time and this is the one and um, it's made out of aluminium oxide and pressed is a pressed stone that um, is quite good but uh, I said at the time that um, if you um, if you use it you must keep them wet and damp because um, if they're dry they, they, when you sharpen with them they wear quite quickly and they wear a, 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 the stone wears out the shape and they're not very good um, and that is a problem but if you if you do um, dampen them uh, I said to put them in, in water for about 10, 10 minutes or so but there's no real need to that just put it in um, some water and watch and if, when the bubbles cease to rise then that is sufficient take it out don't get them too wet because um, the water acts as a sort of a lubricant instead of it, it biting into the metal when you're sharpening it, um, it floats on it you see so um, it, it takes the bite away now then what, it, what happens with these stones and it is annoying because they're wet is that they do attract um, the scum or the crud off, off the sickles and off the tools and that is when you cut uh, wood then um, you get the sap uh, that runs onto the sickle itself or onto the billock or whatever you're using and that dries into like a scum and it's quite hard to remove um, uh, very difficult actually what I use is some um, some uh, penetrating oil put it on it you won't remove it straight away but if you leave it for an hour or so and then you get a piece of paper and you rub it along careful not to damage the edge and you can get rid of it but I only use that much I will show you uh, how you can use that piece in a minute, in a minute later. Uh, uh, so it's got that disadvantage of the water with it. Now then, I, I, was, I have been looking in the past for a different type of, um, of cigar stone. There's two types. One is an aluminium oxide and the one is um, carbide, silicon carbide. And the silicon carbide one is a more modern stone uh, and it um, apparently is quite effective and I've been looking on I looked in oh Amazon and that and um, looking at silicon carbon stones and every one is aluminium oxide so uh, I pretty well gave up and I was downtown in my local um, hardware store or in Ironmongers we call them in Bobby Tracy and um, and I am um, looking for some um, glue which I purchased and then uh, on the way out I noticed they had some stones there and I had a look through them and lo and behold they had cigar stones in silicon carbide. So I thought well I've been looking a long while. They're quite a bit more expensive than these. You can buy these for about five or six pounds and that one costs eleven pound fifty which is about twenty three dollars. And a little bit yes, but I thought well I've never had one so I purchased one and uh, I brought them home and it says on the box they were actually from boxes here faithful to quality tools and it says in the box to use it dry and I'm not averse to that I think the manufacturer knows how to use them so I, did, I didn't put it in water I used it dry and lo and behold it's very effective and I'm always willing to learn that's a big advantage because you haven't got to wait for the stone and you haven't got to keep it damp or whatever. You just can pick it up and you can use it. And this is the stone. It's made, as I say, of silicon carbide. Now, silicon carbide is a different type of material to aluminium oxide. It's um, carborundum. It's got carbon in it and silicon carbide. carbide. And uh, it's very hard, the silicon carbide. Tungsten carbide is, is the, the, what they make the tips of tools with and that's extremely hard and this is a, made out of silicon carbide which has obviously got like a, set, a glass or a sand in them uh, and it's a little bit finer not as coarse a stone as that but um, it, it's very good 
and I've used them and um, found it to be very good. So I thought I'd just make a video to show you that there is these. I recommend them. I've tried them in the, the, the while that I've had them since and I can't find anything wrong with them. They don't they don't, act because they're not in water, they don't take up this crud, as I call it, or this gunge. Whereas this has got, um, this has got sort of impregnated with that, and therefore the stone loses it, its bite because you can't get it off. They do say that if you put them in boiling water and boil them, then it will come out, but I don't fancy doing that. So it's got a big advantage, you don't need to have water <laughs> bombing around, and you, 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 don't, um, you don't get that crud quite so bad. Uh, and and it, it's um, it's a, a, a little bit. It's a lot of bite to that stone. I mean, it will take off metal. You know that that one. You've got to play with it for a while. But this one, it takes off metal straight away. And if you sort of, you know, you just go like that and like that to keep the same angle. And when you're doing that, you come up to the top, middle of the stone and come out at the end. So you're always leaving the edge behind. The edge. We always leaving the edge behind. Like that. There you go. I'm in a bit of a tight spot here to do this. But this stone I find is very good. And uh, if you do that for quite a few times, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And that's it. And I've noticed that if you do that, you can actually, and you, you do it for, a, well, probably a little bit more longer than that, and you look closely at, at, the, at the edge, you can actually pick up a very slight burr there. And, uh, and that's quite interesting. So they do generate a burr, and only a small one, and you only want a small burr. The burr is there to catch the grass, because grass is very clever. <laughs> You can't cut it with uh, uh, if it hasn't got a burr. It, 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 it'll just run along the edge and, it, and, and you can't cut it. But if you've got a slight waviness or a burr, which is a flap of the edge as, it, as you sharpen it, the edge gets thinner and thinner until in the end it's, it's all it's got is like a little whisper of metal. And as that breaks off, it leaves a ragged edge, but it's very sharp. But if you look at it through a microscope, it's quite ragged. And that raggedness is what you want to generate with a sickle. You may not, you don't want it with a billock because you're cutting dead wood and you don't have that problem because dead wood doesn't. Or I mean, no, not dead wood. Uh, it's, two, it's two year old and more wood, um, so um, you don't have that problem in that. So there's no need to have a burr. But with this, the burr is quite effective. If you use it like that, you will get a burr. A burr will be sufficient, and then you can put your finger on there. And you do get a really nice edge with that stone. Really nice edge. I was quite impressed. And also with your grass sickle. That's um, got a nice edge on it. I you get this up a bit higher. What I do with that one, I just put it inside my belt. Like that. And then that stops it from going anywhere. And then press down like that. And you're ready to go with this one a little bit higher because the angle is down and I just bring it up a bit like that just there as I told you before that is a forged steel and it's about four or five mil thick this is about one mil thick and that is blanked out with a sheet of steel it's just pressed out and they put a little roll in there and in order to keep that, keeps it uh, so it, it won't bend, it's nice and solid. And then the other side, that little roll, acts as an edge for you to a guide so you can feel it. So when you come up there, when you come in up there and you're going to, it's running on the roll and it's running on that edge there as well. And that's the edge you want to keep. And it keeps a nice straight parallel edge at the right angle. Turn it around because this is where you sharpen it from. And then you go one. Two. Now then when I'm coming around the back there, I'm, I'm, I'm there. That's that's is touching the rolled edge and it's touching the the front edge. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's it. So um, that's it. And then 
you listen to it. To do that, you put three fingers like that. Put your finger on uh, your thumb on there. Do not move it up and down, but just drag it across the edge. And if it sticks and makes a noise, then there's a good edge. Right to the end. Especially at the end, because of that does a lot of the cutting. So I hope you can see that. So that's the reason I thought that I would recommend that stone, silicon carbide, made by Faithful, I think they're an American firm. Uh, 30, 30 centimeters long or there, about a foot long, and that ought to um, that ought to suffice. So I think that's all. Oh, I'll just go through a couple of things. That's the stone. Recommend it. Um, you know about this stick. I was trying to say to you last time when I made a, a video about this, and I hope it's still on the on the uh, YouTube, that um, when you're cutting and you 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 say that's your edge and you're cutting, that's about you only want to cut about an inch at a time because you're working quite fast. You're going. Oh, they're not sharp. You don't want to get the hand in front of there. There'd be red spots of blood everywhere. So you keep clear of it. A lot of people go like this and, and drag it away. You, the one thing you're doing, you're to put your hand near there and you do not drag. It cuts at an angle. It will not cut effectively dragging. It cuts at an angle. So to do that is wrong. If you do that, if you, that's used for cutting. If you do that, then that edge will last very short time because you're forcing the edge and you're rounding the edge whereas when you cut it there's no resistance against that edge and that edge will survive so um, you don't do that and if you you can't go to there and when you cut like that you haven't done much and all this grass now is on the way so you want to stick like that I've told you about this before and, and it's got two serves two purposes if the grass is fallen down then you can rise it up and cut it right? And then you can rise it up and cut it, and your fingers are out the way, hopefully. And then, and then you can turn it over to what you like. And then when it's got enough, you just go like that, put it to one side or just behind you, just there. You cut some more, and then you get that and put it here. And then you end up when you've done your path, or whatever. You've got a nice row of cut grass to pick up with your fork, and that's the reason for that. Now then, I say that um, that edge has a purpose there because see, you were brushing a hedge. Brushing a hedge is cutting the cutting the this year's growth off like that. You can cut it like that. You can cut it like that. And um, and unfortunately, where I live, the person who had it before here was the chairman of the British um, Rhododendron Society. And all the hedges and a lot of the trees in the grounds are rhododendrons. Now rhododendrons are the best things to cut any time. But I mean to cut them with a sickle, I do cut them. But um, it's quite difficult because they're large leafed and they're fleshy stems. And therefore you can't get at the stem because the leaf is on the way. So you really got to attack it to do to, to any purpose. Now and if you're cutting it, say you're cutting it and... Now and again you will come to a, a spot where you've got some of last year's growth there or two or three year old growth there which would be something of that thickness and of that hardness. Now you, you spoil your edge if you were to cut it. You would spoil your edge if you were to cut it um, with that. But what you can do, you've got this stick as if it's sticking up in the hedge like that. Um, imagine it's sticking it. You've got a stick. You can go around and pull it towards you. That will bend the stick this way now, won't it? And we'll imagine that this is the stick that you bent. And therefore, you can use that now as a chopping action because it doesn't matter about destroying that edge a little bit. And then this you've got that sprung by this pulling it that way and trying to make the stick do serve two purposes. And then all you do, um, think before you cut because um, it's quite a dangerous procedure. And when you come up, you try and anticipate what the results of that cut will be. So you, you think before you cut and say, ah, now then I'm going to strike there. 
and I'm going to cut that up. And the other thing is you cut through the stick, not to the stick. There's two rules. And through the stick means you don't cut it to cut it halfway through. You cut it to cut it through. And therefore you give it enough power to cut through the stick. No more. You don't want to like that. But you want enough power to go through the stick. And you want to know in anticipation what's going to happen. You know, you might think, oh, I'm going to do that. And all of a sudden you realize that as your hand comes down, there's some little stick sticking up and you would avert your hand. So you realize that. So you, you thought before you cut and you've averted a little bit of a tragedy. And then all you do is you cut that and that will drop off. Stick will fly back in the edge. And then you can carry on brushing the hedge. I hope you understand what I'm on about there. <laughs> I know it sounds a bit bodyful. And... Um, Keep these things clear to children, they are very dangerous. I mean, and, and, um, and the other thing is that uh, a little bit of penetrating oil in them when you finish because that preserves the edge. And also, as I told you before, always put them by in a, in a, a piece of an old uh, jeans or whatever. As they say, this will protect the. Uh, the sickle from you, it protects the sickle from you because you're a bit of a menace and it protects you from the sickle. That's got two purposes, to protect the sickle from you and you from the sickle. When you've got them all by, I'm putting them by and that's it. Now I don't think there is anything else but I usually find I've forgotten something. Always remember safety first. And the other thing is that um, people say to me, why do you use a sickle in your place? Because the bloke next door or people down the road, they don't. Nobody else uses sickles, and I say, well, um, they've got the right tools, they're easy, they're quite satisfying to use, and uh, when you use them, you're not using any, uh, any um, hydrocarbons, any petrol or anything like that, you're not generating any noise, you're not generating any smell, you're not polluting the environment, you're using something that has been made 60, 70 years ago and it will last another 60 or 70 years that will do the same now and therefore there's no adverse thing it's quiet all you can hear is the birds the birds don't fly away in terror when you start the engine up my dad I did have a strimmer I, I bought one uh, oh my, uh, about 10 years ago I thought oh I'll give them a go tried it out once brought it into the garage never used it again I sold it for about 15 pound about six years later the second time I picked it up don't want it because it was so noisy I'd have a helmet on because the stuff was flying all over the place your ear plugs on blah 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 and then when it finished it hadn't got a nice road to pick up with the with the fork it was all spread all over the place and I see these people they've got a strimmer and then they've got you know um, then they've got a blower and then they've got a mower and you know I mean it's just not the thing to do anymore I mean if you're a youngster it's your world we're look, trying to look after for you and and, um, and you know I like to think I'm doing my bit to be as environmentally friendly as I can and the fact that you're doing this you see more of the environment you see the little things in the grass you see the little uh, uh, little snakes even and all the sorts of things and bugs and things and uh, you know uh, which you would miss as soon as you start uh, when these machines up they disappear do this the robin comes and rests on the f on the handle of the fork so you're going to show him off <laughs> so you can use it excuse me robin i just uh, want to have this for a minute or so you can have it back after so a little bit of um go with the flow swing with the environment Enjoy it. I hope you do. Okay.